Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. If I sound a little bit head cold stuffy, it's because I am. Hashtag not COVID. I work in a petri dish for a living and I have two kindergartners running around my house. It's all kinds of disease filled. But anyway, even though I do have quite stuffy sinuses, I did want to come out with this video because I've been getting a lot of questions on this topic recently and I don't have a video covering an answer. So I wanted to create this really quickly so that way you get the understanding of how I do this. And today we're talking knock tuning and calibrating the Bitsenberger jig or really any other type of jig that has dials on the top. So real quick, we'll get to how I calibrate this. And I've been using the Cali bit stickers from uh, Buckmaster Outdoors. Uh, John was very gracious and sent these to me as a test run. And I have been incredibly impressed with them. You can get them over at Lancaster Archery Supply. I will throw the uh, link down in the description below you can go over and get yourself I think uh, it comes with a dozen sets or at least nine sets per pack so you can do a whole shop's worth of bits and burgers if you're interested and that's predominantly what we would do at a shop so uh, real quick so you can kind of see what this looks like it is a sticker and it does have the degrees of angle of calibration for both top and bottom so then you can go ahead and either keep a running book or I'll just put it right onto the actual jig itself check out that link in the description below if you're interested on getting your bits calibrated Calibrated to. The second thing comes to knock tuning with the bear shaft and how then you take your knock tune and get it to work with a Bitsenberger style jig. So let's uh, pull the camera down here, zoom in a little bit closer, and you can see how I do this. And the quick answer, by the way, is that you're gonna have to ruin some fletchings. That's why I shoot blazers, uh, because they're cheap. You can ruin a few, because uh, this is gonna take a little bit of trial and error. Okay, so we'll set the clamp aside and we'll zoom in here so we can actually kind of see what it is that I'm talking about. I have two marks here. Uh, one is in blue uh, pen up here at the top and one is in black pen over here on the left side. This black pen is a three fletch configuration with a standard diameter arrow. This one over here is a four fletch configuration with a standard diameter arrow. And that's predominantly what I'm using with for both 3D and for hunting as well. And what that means is even though this is a fletched arrow, I'll get it centered up here and you'll see what I'm talking about. I have the knock indicator here, or at least the, excuse me, the knock tune indicator. Now you notice that right now it's running right down the middle of the V, but that's not what it looks like. When I go and I bear shaft, remember there would be no fletchings, I go to bear shaft tune and I figure out with knock tuning how this tears the same through paper with all the other arrows that are in the batch. I will align that knock tune mark up with the knock indexer so it actually would look like this. Now you could actually fletch your arrow just like this and what this would do you'll notice this vein is now in alignment this would be cock vein out so this vein here that I'm currently touching would actually be out and face away from the bow and actually face the archer there is nothing wrong with shooting cock vein out if you're getting rest clearance so you don't have to do these marks and all this monkeying around if you just shoot cock vein out if your rest allows for that clearance now a lot of modern day dropaways uh, whisker biscuits in particular uh, even though I know they're not a drop away but what I'm getting at is that they don't allow the clearance with shooting cock vein out uh, you know, that bottom vein right so cock vein out let's see if I can actually get this here so cock vein out would look uh, just like this and this vein here would be facing the archer but you'll notice here this vein down here at the bottom is going to probably contact those black bristles and whisker biscuit or contact the launcher arm uh, on a QAD hamski that type of thing I'm not saying it's not possible you could probably get away with a lower profile vein blazers are pretty high if you're in like a boning heat vein or a boning X vein or something from AAE or Q2Y, you'd probably be okay. So if you don't want a monkey with all this, you could actually just leave that knock indexer right in there and have that be the first position. Make sure that you have the flat spot. I have the flat spot here on this receiver. As long as you have that facing in the same direction every single time you rotate, you can actually fletch cock vein out and you'll be totally fine. The issue is, of course, if you sell these arrows or whatever, when I try with a different rest, they're gonna have to be cock vein up anyway. So I just like to start from scratch. So if I put this arrow in here, as this, I know my arm's going to be in the way for a second. If I put this in here with the current position that it's at, right now it is just off enough. It is just off enough that my current uh, knock tuning mark is not going to match. So you'll notice here it actually comes in with my four fletch mark over here, but that's not where it's going to get uh, marked on and knocked onto the string. It's actually going to get over here. So I actually have to rotate that knock tuning mark and I'm gonna smash some fletchings in here, but that's okay. So now my silver mark of my knock tune is now lined up with that black mark on my jig. 
Okay, and now I would fletch the uh, fletch the bear shaft, and then when I go to turn the knock, I know just based on trial and error, trying this two or three or four times, I know now that this silver sharpie line will end up right in the middle of my knock groove, which means that every single arrow is going to be shooting exactly the same in each and every situation. And all I did was I just had to do a little bit of trial and error. So I had to, you know, maybe I moved it over a little bit, and then it wasn't perfectly aligned. Uh, up when I did the knock tune. Maybe I moved it over a little bit more and you know just so on and so forth and I probably ruined three or four good blazers, probably had to scrape off some glue, maybe a little bit of acetone. It probably took a half hour but that's okay you know it was worth it and now I just have this uh, black uh, pen mark here on my Bitsenberger for standard diameter arrows and now every single time that I knock tune I can just turn that over and it fits in there perfectly every single time and that way I know that my knock tune is always good no matter how I fletch and no matter how I knock it onto the string. So I know that's not like the answer that everybody wants to hear that you're gonna actually have to try a little trial and error. When it comes to knock tuning and comes to fletching afterwards, there is no real quick down and dirty simple way. You're just gonna have to try it a few times and see the angle. Now, if you click pause on the video back when I'm showing these marks and make a mark probably close or try that angle out with a standard diameter arrow, 244 to 246, you'll probably write in the money. Now, of course, remember the longer the vein, you're trying to have that silver knock tune mark uh, come right down the center of the vein as it crosses over for left to right helical. So with a short uh, two inch blazer like this, that center of that vein is very close takes a lot less trial and error. Uh, not the case with all fletching. So you'll see, for example, here that the center of the actual helical, you know, it doesn't line, it line up perfectly at the base of the fletching. It actually kind of lines up more with the center of the fletching as it crosses over the shaft to do the helical. The longer the vein and the longer the fletch or feather, whatever you're going to use, that style, you're going to try to, again, have it cross over right in the center because that'll give you more of a perfectly up and down cock vein up feel. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions on bear shaft tuning, knock tuning, knock indexing, fletching, calibrating your bits and burger. Use the stickers. It's 27,000 times easier. Again, link in the description below. Please do follow me over on Facebook and Instagram and send me a message over there. Send me an email, averagejackarchie at gmail.com or leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.